So we have our ball game, but the next thing I want to add is some kind of ability. And in, in my case, I want to be able to click the left mouse button and launch in a direction. So we'll just have a little kind of like a dash in a different direction that I'm holding. And there's a couple uh, things to watch out for with this, but we'll learn how we can add a new input and then manipulate some physics stuff to get it to work. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add a new input, so a new input action. Uh, just to show you the process of continuing to build on our input actions. We have our move. Now we want a, I'm going to call it a launch. So we'll go to input action, IA underscore launch. Again, it is kind of like a dash, but I don't know. Launch, save selected, open it up. And this one's going to be a lot more simple than our other one, since it's just a button press. And let's go to uh, value type. We do want it to be a Boolean, so either true or false. So it's really just a pressed. But one thing I am going to add here, uh, just to be very specific, if you go to triggers, if you hit the plus button, and this is going to help us define what kind of input processing we want. So you, there's different kinds of like tap or release or whatever. And I'm just going to say pressed just to make it uh, very clear what we're trying to do here. So it is a true or false is the button pressed. Okay, we can save that. Again, I'm going to close out some of my other windows here. All right, so now we need to add the input action that we just created to our input map context. So we have our move. Let's collapse that. We want a new one, new mapping, and this one will be called launch. We just made it. Let's expand it. Now we're going to put this on a button. I'm going to put this on my left mouse button right here, keyboard. Uh, let's type left mouse, left mouse button, expand that. And I don't think there's anything else we need to change here since we told it to, to do press in the action. Uh, so really, if we just listen for left mouse button, process the pressed, and then it should tell us yes or no. Let's actually test this out. Also, make sure that you save. I just kind of minimized it, but make sure you save and open it up. Go to our ball pawn, and we're going to add another input action event, just like we did with our move. So scroll. Right click, I, A, input action. We'll choose launch under enhanced action events. Perfect. Okay, and now we're just gonna print a string just to make sure that it works. Print string launch. Compile, save, open it back up. And if we hit play, all I wanna do is click my left mouse button to make sure it's printing the string. Launch, launch, launch. Okay, that's exactly what we want. And so now that we have that hooked up, we can actually add the functionality. So first we need to calculate the direction that we want to launch our ball, and then we need to actually apply the physics to do it. So I'm going to talk about the calculation first. In order to get the launch that I want, I want to get the current direction from the input. I want to create a, let's say, a direction from that, so our X and our Y, because I want to launch in the current direction that I'm moving at uh, based on what I'm pressing. And then I want to add a slight little bit of vertical hop. And what I mean by that is if I have my ball that's moving in my scene, I want to just pop it up just a little bit too. So I want a slight Z element. I just want to add a little bit to this vertical. So let's calculate that all out. It's going to be a little bit weird. Uh, especially the first part, but I'm going to create my variables first. So let's do plus. First one we're going to make is our launch strength because we want to be able to control how strong we are launching the ball in whatever direction. So it's going to be a float, compile, save. And we're going to, let's see, I think I had it at 1100, something close to a thousand compile, save. Um, we'll adjust that later. And I also want that slight vertical hop amount that I was talking about. So I'm going to hit another plus button. We're going to call this vertical hop. That's also going to be a float. We're going to combine all this into our vector at the end. And for our vertical hop, compile, save, I'm going to give it a default of, let's say, 0.2. Now, this isn't going to make sense yet because in the end, I really want this value to be between 0 and 1. So I'm going to show you one cool thing you can do here is inside of your details, when you have a variable selected, you can actually clamp it down. So my value range, I want to be between zero, which is no vertical hop and one. And I'll do the same thing for slider as well, zero and one. And so now the designer can look at that and choose the amount of vertical hop they want just by dragging the bar up and down, which is just a lot nicer. So I'll put that at point two. All right, so these variables don't really mean anything until we start plugging this in. So let's do that. In order to calculate this, we need to get the current movement input. So if I right click and I type in I underscore 
These are input actions. You see this bottom part, enhanced action values, if I get my IA underscore move. This is not an event, so it's not a red node that runs code. It instead gets the current value of our input being held. In other words, it'll give us our X and our Y. Now remember, because we were rotating and doing some other funky stuff, our X and Y were kind of reversed. So in order to get this proper, what I need to do is I need to reverse my X and Y direction so that I'm moving it how I actually want to. Like I want to actually move left and right like this and up and down, whereas my movement is kind of rotating. It's the opposite um, axis. So in this case, I actually do want the correct ones, but uh, I'm just going to reverse these right here. So to do that, I'm going to right click. I'm going to split my struct pen so that I can get my X and my Y. And I'm just literally going to make a new vector, make vector two, disconnect that one. And I'm just going to reverse them, right? Make a new one. That's the inverse. Maybe there's a other way to do that, but this is simple. Now, the other thing, remember, I still need to normalize it just like I did up here because I, I don't want it to launch much further in a diagonal direction than up and down. So I still need to normalize it, pull off and type normalize 2D. Now, once I normalize it, I want to add my Z dimension, which is this extra value that we're gonna pull in. That's gonna be our vertical hop. Okay, so over here, I'm just gonna right click without pulling off and type make vector. I'm gonna split my struct over here just to be very explicit. And I'm gonna pull my X into my X, Y into my Y, and my Z, I'm gonna grab my vertical hop. So I'm going to create a three dimensional vector for my 2D by just keeping the X and the Y and making my vertical hop my Z. Remember, this is my zero to one value, my 0.2. So once I normalize it, then I'm adding the 0.2 on top. Otherwise it does funky things if you do that beforehand. So make vector and then Remember, we have our direction at this point. It's going to be slightly pointing up, but then our direction from our input. And we want to pull off of that and multiply it by our strength. So multiply by our launch strength. Just like that. Okay. Plug that in. Ah, ooh, that's a lot of calculation. I think once we do all this, I'll pull that up here. Then it's just a matter of actually launching the thing. First, I want to show you that if we take this, if we... If we try to pull off of this and we type add impulse, which is how we would apply a one-time force, it's trying to autocomplete and it's gonna give a sphere in parentheses. That means it's running it off of a different component. Don't do that. Just to be super, super clear and make sure that we're doing the correct one, I'm going to drag my sphere. So this is my ball, remember my ball pawn. I'm gonna draw my sphere that we're gonna apply the physics to since we're launching the ball. Pull off of that and say add impulse. So when we add our impulse, it's looking for a impulse. So we calculated it all right here. We'll pull that in. I do want a velocity change, meaning that I want this to be sudden. I want to launch in a direction. This is a dash. I don't want to like compound forces and uh, add to the pile. I really want to reset it. So I want a velocity change. We'll delete that here. I want to show you something uh, before I add this last part. If I connect this, this is all the calculations down here. If I connect this impulse right here and we try it out you're going to see something at play see how it kind of pauses at the end kind of hops i really just want to move the opposite direction so the problem here is that we have a lot of velocity that we're we are currently dealing with and we are changing it but it's getting a little confused what i really want to do is just entirely zero out my velocity and then i want to add my impulse so a quick way to do that I'm gonna copy paste my sphere over here. It's the same one, uh, it's the same reference, it's just faster. Pull off, I'm gonna say set all physics linear velocity because I still want my rolling potentially. I'm gonna plug in, plug out, and I wanna make sure this is zero, 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 and I'm not adding to current. So this will zero everything out. We're setting everything to zero, at least our linear velocity. That's our left, right, up and down. And then after that, I'm gonna add my impulse. So this will just kill all the velocity and then we can push it a direction. So I think this will be a little bit cleaner. Compile, save, we'll try it out. Okay, click on the screen that way, that way, that way, that way. You see, it, it's a lot faster and more sudden and more responsive. Um, the problem now you see is that there's no cooldown, so we can just do this forever, uh, which is, I don't know, kind of fun, but maybe not what we want. All right, so let's add our cooldown. We'll come back into the ball pond. 
all I'm going to do here, uh, at least conceptually, is I'm going to track a Boolean that will lock it out because it will test, are we currently in cooldown? And if we are, then don't continue. When we launch the ball, we're gonna start the cooldown, we're gonna wait a certain amount of time, and then we're gonna turn the Boolean back to true. So let's see what that looks like in code. We're gonna call this, uh, let's create a new variable, is launch ready, just like that. Uh, we'll change our type to a Boolean, compile, save. Now this part is really important. Make sure that the default, once you compile save, is set to true because we want to be ready by default. It is true. We, we start off ready, otherwise we'll never enter it. And that, that would be bad. Once we enter, so once we attempt to launch with an input, we are going to pull in our is launch ready. So get, we're going to test with a branch. So pull off and type branch. Say, are we ready? If we are, so pull off of true. If we are ready, then continue. If we're not, don't do anything. Just ignore whatever the input was. So we can spam the button. If we're not ready, it'll never continue. So in order for the rest of this to work, the second we start our launch, first thing we want to do is we want to set our is launch ready to be false. We are not ready, right? So once we enter, you're not ready, is launch ready, leave that blank. So uncheck this false, continue. Add our pulse, do our calculations, whatever. Once we're done, we want to wait our cooldown time. Now you can make this a variable if you want, which we probably will. Let's pull off and type delay. So this node, which you can only, you can't use in functions, but you can use inside of your main event graph code. Uh, you can wait a certain amount of time and then continue to the next nodes. So it lets you pause your, um, your execution, which is pretty handy especially for cooldown kind of things. So what I want to do, I'm the shortcut, remember, is promote to variable, right? We can just put duration, but I usually like to change the name after I do that because usually it's a bad default. So I want to call this launch cooldown. So compile, save, and let's change the launch cooldown to something like two seconds. It's probably reasonable. I'll save two seconds. Last thing, once we wait, we want to turn the Boolean back to true. So we're going to drag in our Boolean, hit set, change that Boolean to be true. We are now ready. So full flow is we attempt to launch. If we're ready, which we are by default, then we will continue and we will change the Boolean to be false. We are no longer ready. So we do our launch. We wait for two seconds and then we turn our Boolean back to true. We have done our cooldown at this point and we are ready to receive more inputs. That's it. Uh, I know there's a lot of weird flow stuff here, but that's the basics of how we can do a cooldown. Let's come test it out. Control S to save and test it. All right. So every two seconds, we should be able to dash. It feels pretty good. You can see if we're not pressing anything, there's a little hop up. I kind of like that it gives me a little bit of feedback saying you're not holding a direction, but I think it feels pretty nice. And at this point, you can tweak the launch ability. You can make it a little bit more powerful, maybe you know mess with the cooldown if you want, maybe add a little more verticality if you want, but that's the basics of it. And this whole process just shows you how you can add additional actions to your player.